Wow. So first of all, I'm very honored for being at Jed's last thing. Also, the fact that all of you could be seeing Star Wars right now uh, <laughs> makes me especially honored to be Later. here. Um, so my what? <laughs> oh, I gotta go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> See you. Okay. Um, so my name is Evan Morkow. I went to Olin College of Engineering. I'm a JavaScript engineer at uh, Nihilus, and today we'll be showing you how you can use all the technology you're familiar with, like React and Flux and JavaScript and whatever dialect you want, and Electron uh, to build cool, sweet, new, powerful apps uh, like this, but on the Party desktop, um, on all the platforms, Mac, Windows, and Linux, um, like I said, using some of the stack that you have. Uh, so to sort of ex demonstrate this, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the project I've been working on. Uh, which is this, it's an open source, extensible email client called N1. Um, and this is uh, designed to work across all platforms, and the idea is to make it something that could be easily uh, extended. So first of all, let me just real quick answer why build a mail client in the first place. Uh, well, the short of it is that email is pretty valuable. It's the largest installed communication base on the planet. Uh, but creating new email experiences is very hard, uh, which is why when people do it, they build a whole new prescriptivist mail client from scratch and uh, try and make that the end of it. Um, so the, the whole thesis of this is that instead of building all the features, build a foundation, build a platform, which is why the technology and Electron and JavaScript is so important to this, such that you or anyone else can customize and build it to your whims. Um, so that's sort of the premise of N1, and now I'm going to demo that off a little bit too. What? Um, uh, live. What? So live demoing here. So this is this is N1. Um, live email too. Live email. That's right. <laughs> and the idea is that it is sort of a, a, the basic, simple foundation of an email client. Uh, this designed to sort of be the base plate with which you want to add new extensions to. So for example, let's say we wanted to add a thing to translate emails and connect with GitHub uh, and add some sort of quick scheduling plug into it too. Uh, so now when we go back to here, we've, we've added this extra sidebar piece here which can pull in all the GitHub information and show me like, there's like cool new repos and stuff. Um, also additional, <laughs> uh, we can also create plugins in here that can uh, for example, help me schedule something. So say I want to have coffee maybe sometime here, sometime here. Um, and the sort of input times that you have here. Um, but a lot of other pieces too is that we can also combine different plugins to say do something that translates it on the fly for you as well. Um, so this is sort of the type of thing that we can we can do once we can extend it. Um, but the whole point and why we've been able to do this is because at the end of the day, even though this is a native Mac, Windows, Linux app, it's actually built on modern web technology. Um, everything you see here is based on is based on that. Um, there you go. And, uh, Live email, guys. <laughs> this is yeah, this is not scripted. <laughs> the thing that really makes this work is a project that GitHub made called Electron. Uh, that if you really want to take anything from this talk, just remember, like, play with this because it's really cool. Um, basically, what they did is this: they took Chrome and they strapped Node.js to it and added this really rich set of APIs to let you interact with the core OS. Um, this is what Atom is built on top of. Uh, this is what N1 is built on top of, along with a lot of other apps, uh, and increasingly so, because just like it's a great platform. Um, what that means for us is that, is that because of Electron, I can actually render everything in CSS, including like little Mac stoplights here, but it has the APIs to do the native behaviors uh, that you would naturally expect from that. Um, it also means that since it works on Mac, Windows, and uh, Linux as well, uh, we actually have the fact, so here on Mac we have these buttons that sort of render on retina displays and are sort of your bubbly Mac things. Make a Windows! But if you just change the CSS... Don't do it! Oh! Oh my god! Oh. My eyes! Oh. 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 
Design. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Standard Windows 10 designs. You sort of like block all Finally! Finally! Linux like Linux. Hang on. What I've always wanted. Um, the other nice thing about the fact that it's Chrome and Electron uh, is that here on the console we have sort of your standard document body, but I also have all of the native node modules as well right here. Um, actually, this whole app is backed by a local SQLite database, um, and our Flux stores can just pull data right out of there and display them. Uh, so it's a really nice, much more robust thing than, say, just using plain old local storage uh, to give you this nice, like, offline experience as well. Uh, we even can do things like this here is a separate uh, worker window that sort of processes all of the incoming JSON data. We noticed that. If you want to keep scrolling through this at like a buttery 60 fips, uh, <laughs> excuse me, fips. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, turns out if you're parsing megabytes of JSON, you like block your single render thread and like it starts to suck. Um, so the idea here is like this is actually truly parallel. This is a completely separate node process, and you can spawn them how you want because you're just running a native node environment and all the data can shuttle via IPC uh, back and forth across as well. Um, and actually just sort of to show you what some of this code looks like, we have this, uh, I have a, another plugin that I put in here that uh, when you're on related to a GitHub thread, it'll like automatically jump you straight to the thread um, on GitHub, right? Uh, but this, but that plugin there, <laughs> is, is actually, it's actually pretty small. That entire thing is, Copy script. 40 lines. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the nice thing about the fact that we're running Node is that you can run whatever transpiler you want. This one's in coffee, uh, but we also have several others that are built in ES6. You can also, hell, if you want to run TypeScript in here, you like can. Uh, but it also transpiles in the same environment because you sort of have whatever Node system you want to use with it as well. Um, so the other nice thing about being able to run in this sort of separate node desktop environment uh, is actually, for, frankly, the fact that you can just test it really easily. Um, we have uh, the, the whole thing can run these live, these integrated unit tests very quickly um, because since we're using React, we can render virtual DOM, we can use all the node things. So this is testing all of the interactions of the app, headless. Um, in a couple seconds as well. Uh, the other nice, the other cool what thing about Electron. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Just duck now! And also because you're just running Electron. So Kevin, the author of Electron, made this cool integration with like Chrome WebDriver. Uh, I made a program called Spectron, which will also let you run full-blown uh, integration tests with it as well. So particularly for the types of things that need actual end-user keyboard inputs to what? test with, um, oh, wow. you, can, uh, you can run all those tests as well. This version of Thunderbird seems amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thunderbird and Mailbox recently. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh too soon! <laughs> I know, it's been tough. It's the, the, the part of the idea is now, like, instead of waiting for someone to build sort of every feature you want, like, put a platform with the tools that you're used to using uh, and, and make it something that you can also hack on as well, which is sort of the premise of this email client, but also the Electron project as a whole. Um, and finally unlocking all the desktop environment where you have a lot of the nice native things and offline support you'd expect, but being able to use the same tooling that uh, you always have as well. Um, another final thing about this is this entire uh, project is all open source. Um, so if you want to see like the, not just how to build an Electron client or even just how this is built, um, it's certainly something you can check out and play with as well. And. Yeah, so that, that's sort of how to put together an app with Electron. It's certainly something I <laughs> recommend trying and playing out with as well. But otherwise, thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>